Hey everyone, it's Rebecca from Bex and Books, and before I start today's video, um, I just wanted to say that the last video I posted asking your advice about um, giving my opinions on coloring book hauls and coloring supply hauls um, seemed to get very positive feedback from everyone. I, you know, I think there are about 80 something thumbs up on that video and almost every comment with the exception of maybe one or two have been positive. So um, I have decided to go ahead and make that video. Um, I don't know when it'll be, hopefully sometime soon while I still have the thoughts and ideas in my head and um, I might actually uh, not write a script but write a few things down to make sure you know um, I stay on topic and make sure I keep things respectful and not go off on tangents and stuff like that so yeah so thank you so much for all your positive feedback for your encouragement and um, so yeah I'll, I'll definitely be making that video hopefully within the next few days and it'll be up hopefully sometime maybe by this weekend or early next week so thank you so much to everybody who helped me with that and replied or gave a thumbs up or anything like that so all right today's video I am I've decided to share some of my personal favorite finished colored pages um, ones that I've colored and the reason I'm doing this is I'm I'm not trying to brag, I'm not boasting, I'm not saying, hey, look, look at how good my pictures are. It's nothing like that, I promise, because, you know, I don't think I'm great, and I, <laughs> I wouldn't normally do this, but I've actually had um, several people ask if I could do something like this, like they wanted to see more finished colored pictures for me, because I am new to YouTube and the coloring community so you guys really haven't had a chance to see my style or the way I color or the way I use certain coloring supplies and stuff like that and some of you genuinely seemed interested so I thought I'd share some of my personal favorite pictures and so you can kind of get a feel for how I color and um, what I like to color and things like that to get to know me as a colorist a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and this is in no particular order. I'm just going with you know what's laying on top and working my way down from there. So the first picture is out of this book here. It's 50 Spring Miniatures by Camelia Angelkova and there is no rhyme or reason for why I love this picture so much. It just, I just love it. I don't know, I love the way it turned out. And it is this picture here. And you can see how simple this picture is. And I don't know, I was just on my couch like I normally do, I sit on my couch and I have this, uh, an ot light. It's a very bright, uh, almost daylight, type light next to the couch and I turn that on and I have a little lap desk and I'll color and watch TV shows or movies or something like that. And with this one, I was doing the exact same thing and I'm pretty sure these are my Holbein's that I use, my Holbein colored pencils. And I just wasn't thinking too much about it. I was just picking up colors that I liked and I was coloring. And when I was finished with the colors, for whatever reason, I decided to take like a fine liner uh, I think it was a Posca paint marker and just go over the dark lines again instead of trying to um, cover up the dark lines I decided to enhance the dark lines of the line art and for some reason I feel like that made such a difference in this picture because if you compare it to let's say another picture I have in here where I didn't do that and I know there's another one somewhere this one See this one here, I, I didn't really do that. I did do it a little bit on the flowers, but I didn't do it all over. So while this one looks really nice, you flip it back to this one, and for some reason this picture just, just really pops. And it can also be the colors I chose as well. I chose very bright 
colors, but I really think it is the the decision to go over the line art again and actually enhance the line art. So I don't know. I was shocked when I finished it and I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, I really like the way this turned out. I can't believe it. And this was back in May. And I don't know. I just, I'm very pleased with this one. And every time I, you know, if I flip through this book back in the spring when I was looking for other pictures and everything and I would pass this picture, it would just, it would just pop out to me. And I'm, I like the colors and it just made me smile. And I'm really happy with the way that turned out. So yeah, nice and simple to start with. Um, the next picture is in this one. This is Fay Dorables, a sweet and simple coloring book by Selena Finnick. And this is the picture in this one. I'm gonna have to, because of the glare. But as you can see, once again, just a simple picture. This was like my um, birthday picture that I colored for myself and I love cupcakes and every year for my birthday I always ask for cupcakes instead of a cake and she's the cupcake fairy and I like her and I really love the way she turned out and she's just very bright and glittery I don't know how well you can see it because there we go glitter and just bright colors and she's so cute you know she looks so happy I would be happy too if I was surrounded by cupcakes like that. But yeah, and then in the background, I just use my Pebbles chalk that I showed in my video um, about my favorite fun coloring supplies that I like to use. And someone asked me about if there, if you needed to use a fixative on this um, on the chalk once you finish. The picture so it doesn't like rub off or anything as you can see on this page here there is no chalk at all so it hasn't transferred and if you rub it I'm rubbing it right now and there is nothing on my fingers so it actually stays so you don't have to use a fixative for the chalk background the chalk is different and that's why I do like using the chalk so yeah I do like the way she turned out she turned out cute and fun, and she reminds me of my last birthday in my 30s. My, this was for my 39th birthday, so I had to celebrate my last birthday in my 30s. Um, the next pictures, I have a couple in here. This is out of the Miss Fantastic Coloring Book by Deborah Muller, and I've talked about this book in other videos and about how much this book... Uh, helped me get through 2020 which was an incredibly incredibly rough year for me and so this I know it sounds crazy because it's just a coloring book but this coloring book and the pictures in it mean a lot to me because it took my mind off things and also the fact that it has the inspirational quotes it was just I don't know it just helps so much it's the little things sometimes it's the little things but one of my favorites and here happens to be this girl here and she's nice and simple and you know there there's nothing crazy about it there's no glitter on her um, her hair I just use Prismacolor markers you know just to do each strand a different color I didn't even shade her hair I think what it is for her is the skin and I love the way her skin turned out. And it's because I use my Luminance pencils. And I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, when I am looking in my coloring books and I look back at certain pictures and I look at the skin and go, oh my gosh, that skin is beautiful. It's always because I've used my Luminance pencils. So I was so happy. With this. I mean, I thought she was just, the skin was so pretty. And I don't know if you can see or tell, like, it just looks so smooth and so well blended. And I just, I look at that. You can almost see, like, a little bit of shine to her and everything. And she, it just, I love the way she came out. I just, even though it's something so simple, it's just, I don't know. I think it's mainly the skin that did it for me. 
and maybe the hair too I'm, I'm kind of happy with the hair colors I chose but it was just a simple quick picture and um, for the water I used the chalks once again to um, you know a little bit darker blue up here and then a lighter blue as it came down and it just I don't know it just works and I'm happy with it and so um, I do have another one in here and that's this shiny girl because <laughs> she has a lot of glitter on her um, it says I use my super colors and stickles on her so that's why she's super shiny it's because I use stickles I'm assuming most of you guys um, who are in the coloring community and have been in the coloring community for a while know what stickles are um, if you don't um, just ask me and I'll explain it to you in the comments you know what stickles are or I could show them in another video so you can see but um, yeah I just I really like the way she turned out I like her hair I don't know something about her hair the way it turned out and then of course just the pretty glitter all over her and um, a lot of the times when I start a picture I really don't know where it's going I just start somewhere and I'll look through my colors and I'll think okay I like this color so I'm gonna do her hair that color and so whatever color I picked I, I laid a base and then I went and shaded with complementary colors and then just kind of use that from there for a color scheme you know so you with the blue hair and then the color scheme with the tail and then um, on her fin there's like a bluish purple type um, glitter and her lips there's a purplish glitter and in her eyes you know there's a bluish greenish just I don't know it just ends up just making that one decision and then it kind of just goes from there so that's generally how I color I don't necessarily sit down and think about um, a color palette or anything like that um, I just kind of pick somewhere I want to start whether it's with the hair or the eyes or the the skin tone and just kind of let it go from there and actually there's one more here this girl here I really like her and, and if you see the quotes you know take time to count your blessings there's always something to be thankful for and when you're going through such a hard time like 2020 um, just seeing something like that and just relaxing and coloring a picture and having fun using these pretty colors and this glitter which you know makes you feel happy and and then reading about being thankful which there really is always something to be thankful for even in the hardest times and I don't want to get like mushy or I, like I'm some kind of inspirational speaker but if you really sit down and think about it sometimes what you're going through if you start thinking about the good things what you do have you can find so many more things to be thankful for than to be upset about and so I try to do that you know every day or when I start feeling that way I start thinking about all the wonderful things I have in my life um, sorry I'm not gonna get emotional like I lost my dad in 2020 which is horrible but I'm thankful that I still have my mother, I still have my brother, my sister-in-law, my husband, you know, and I have to be thankful for those things. I can't let my life stop, you know, and not be grateful for the, my family that I still have. And I can appreciate the family that I still have here while still continuing to love my father because my dad's always going to be with me. He's just going to be with me in a different way. That's it. He'll always be a part of me and he'll always be with me. It's just in a different way. And that's what I have to remind myself. You know, I still have a father, but I just have a father in a different way now. So it's almost like he's with me more now than he's ever been because when he was physically here on this earth I couldn't see him all the time talk to him he wasn't always around but I feel like you know now that he's he's gone there's always a piece of him and a part of him with me 24 7 so that's how I have to look at things that's how I make it through things so I'm really sorry I'm not trying to be a downer but I know it sounds crazy like I said to say like a, a coloring book 
means a lot to you, but you know, when it has something like this and you are, you are struggling because this is in July and I lost my dad in February. So it, it had only been a few months and I was right in the middle of that terrible grief and um, yeah, it helped a lot. So I highly recommend this coloring book for anyone. It's really nice. But moving along, um, this is another one. I really like her and it has to do with the hair color again. What, um, these are my polychromos and Prismacolor markers and I also use some um, uh, stickles on her. And yeah, I just like the way she turned out too. I, just these pretty glittery, as you can see down here, all her glittery things and, you know, stay positive, seek to see more of the good stuff in life. And I like, you know, the little puns she uses with, with the C and stuff like that. So yeah, I really like this coloring book a lot. I'm, I'm not finished with it, but this is probably going to be the first coloring book I've ever completed. 100% because I'm, I'm pretty close to completing it. So yeah, I recommend this for anyone, especially if you're going through a hard time and you just want to get, you know, um, maybe back into coloring again or back into your hobbies just to make you feel better. It's a great way to start again with the positive affirmations plus the simple pictures. I, I think it'd be good for anybody going through a hard time or anybody who just loves, you know, cute little mermaid pictures. So yeah, I'm happy with those. Um, the next one is in this book, and this is Yippee Kwaiye, uh, Volume 1 by Danny Banani, which is, I just love that name. I love saying that name. But even though I'm not a mandala girl, when it comes to mandalas that look like this, I'm definitely a mandala girl. <laughs> this is so cute. And I had so much fun. This was the breakfast bonanza. So it's just all kinds of like breakfast foods and stuff. And I saw this and I sat down and I swear I pulled out every coloring supply in my arsenal, I feel like, and sat down and just colored this page. I had so much fun with this. I mean, because there was just so much you could do. I mean, we're talking markers, pencils, gel pens, glitter gel pens, metallic gel pens, just pretty much any, the glaze gel pens. This is what, okay, this is what I'm going to show you. When I was talking about the glaze gel pens in my other video about fun coloring supplies, I talked about coloring mugs, coffee mugs, and these are the ones I'm talking about. Like if you look at Mr. Orange mug here, and I use the glaze on him. You can see how shiny he looks, almost like he's, um, you know, made of porcelain or ceramic. And I use that on all the mugs. And I love the way it turned out so much. And I'm like on the cereal bowls, I use my metallic gel pens. And on a lot of the silverware, I use the metallic just to give it, you know, the metal look. And then like on the milk cartons um, and the bread, um, it's mostly pencil, except for maybe the red part I think was marker and the red tie and hat was marker, but this is all pencil. The croissant is all pencil. And you see I have like, um, I don't know if you can tell, but like using my, it's hard to find the light. I wish I could catch the light a little better. But anyway, it's supposed to be glittery. <laughs> I use my glitter gel pens to make the jam look uh, glittery and also the the foil on the muffin look glittery and I could just talk about this picture forever because I had so much fun coloring this and when you can actually remember the experience you have coloring a picture like what you were actually watching um, how your stuff was laid out and you just remember the fun you had then you then you know you've you've colored a good picture you know so I just I love this so much and I love the way it turned out and I have other um, pages in this book colored, but um, every time I open this book to look for maybe a page to color, this is the first page and I see it and I'm always like, oh, yay, this is so cute, look how cute this is. You know, it always makes me happy to see it. So yeah, I really like this one a lot. And I highly recommend this book and she has a volume two and you can get them from her Etsy, her Etsy store, which I will link for you. 
because I highly recommend these. These are just so cute, so cute. The only mandalas I will color. Okay, I have two pictures out of this. This is Victorian Darlings by Hannah Lynn, and this is from the Artist Edition, which you can only get from her website. Um, the picture I'm going to show you is, hands down, my favorite picture I have ever colored of all time. I'm, it just is. I had so much fun coloring it, and I love the way it turned out. I almost wanted to cry when I saw it because I couldn't believe that I had colored that. I know someone else could have probably done it 10 times better, but for me, that I had colored it, it just, oh, I love her so much. And this is it. This is the Victorian girl working at the bakery. And, you know, I love coloring foods and desserts, and this was just perfect. But I didn't realize how much fun I was going to have actually coloring her. And I just, oh God, I love the way she turned out. I love her hair. I love her eyes. I love her face because I tried to make it look like she was kind of been working and baking and stuff. So she had a little, um, like her cheeks and nose would be red from maybe being a little hot or in the steam or something like that. And I also used those pebbles chalks I was talking about to make the the smoke, or I don't want to say smoke, but like the steam coming off the, the apple pie, you know, and just, just everything about this picture. I just love the way it turned out. It makes me so happy that I was able to, what I feel for my um, level of um, coloring, I feel like I did the very best that I could and I did her justice. I was so scared I didn't want to mess her up even though there is a second picture but it's more of a close-up picture and you know you don't get nearly as much detail as you do in this one and I'm just so happy with the way this turned out and I love it and yeah I almost want to pull this out and frame it just and hang it in my kitchen just because you know I didn't realize I could be capable. Sometimes you see something and you don't realize what you're capable of just for yourself, for my level of coloring. So yeah, this one made me so happy. And then the other one in here, you've seen this one if you saw my finished colored pages for the month of August, is this pretty lady here. and. I love the way she turned out too. I didn't know what direction I was going to go in with her. All I knew is I wanted to have her to have purple hair. That's all I knew. So that's what I started with was her purple hair and this kind of went from there. And I, I love the way she turned out. Um, the wallpaper in the background, I used a metallic uh, marker. So just to kind of give it a little shine and she just, I'm very pleased with it. I'm, I'm just pleased with the way she turned out and I love her <laughs> after the bakery one she was my second favorite where I was like I, I definitely want to get to her I love her so yeah I really like the Victorian uh, coloring book and all the girls I love all of Hannah Lynn's girls but something about this Victorian one re really inspired me so the next pictures are from um, these are from Magical Delights by Clara Markova and I know why I love these pictures so much. Um, this one, nothing fancy, nothing super special, but this was the first picture I had ever colored in a Clara Markova book. And I, know, I can tell you what pencils I use because for some reason, I only use Tombow or Rogerton pencils in Clara Markova's books. For me, they work beautifully together. I love how they look together. It's, I don't know if, if it's the paper, it might be the paper in this because the paper is so smooth and buttery. I know the, the Erogitans kind of have like a, a bad rap for being really hard wax pencils. So you have to press really hard and it, they are harder wax pencils and you do have to press harder, but I don't really feel that way on the paper for her pictures because I think because of the texture of the paper, you don't have to press as hard and also they blend beautifully 
on this. So I chose this picture first because my favorite flower is sunflower. And I got this book in and the colored pencils in on the same day. So I was excited to try both. So I kind of found this combination uh, by mistake, really. It just so happened that I got both of them in on the same day and I wanted to try the new pencils and I wanted to color in the new book. And I don't know, for me, it's just, it turned out to be magic. <laughs> so yeah, I love this picture and it just brings back memories and happy memories and, you know, good times and just being really excited. And then the other one is this one here. And this is kind of the same thing. Um, I think this is probably the second one I colored. And for this one, I got really excited because I had ordered um, a set of the Posca paint pens. And so I decided to um, use those for this picture because there were already black little dots around each of these. And so I, I used the paint pens to um, cover the black dots and make them, you know, pink, blue, purple, things like that. I added a, the black dots on the leaves. I just covered them with the white. And I don't know, I, I don't know why I did it, but I was just, I just wanted to use the paint pens. And I, I don't know, I ended up liking the way it turned out a lot. So I have a style, a certain style of coloring in Clara Markova's books that I only do in her books and that I don't tend to do in other books. And I don't know why. It's got to be the Erogeton pencils and I have to use some Posca paint marker, paint markers in some way. So yeah, really happy with those. You know, not the most artistic, not the most beautiful thing in the world, but sometimes having favorite pictures can be about nostalgia too, or what the picture means to you. You know, it it doesn't have to be just because you think it's aesthetically beautiful. It can be beautiful to you because of a memory or because of you saw your progress and you were proud of using a new technique or something and how it turned out. So that's how those pictures are for me. Um, another one is in Tenderful Enchantments by Clara Markova, and I did this one this year because I just got this book this year, I think. I don't know what took me so long, but it's this one here, and I love this. When I, when I went through all the pages and I saw this picture, I knew this was going to be my first picture. I thought it was so cute with the mouse family asleep in bed. I love how the raspberries turned out. I just loved everything. Just this, it looks so homey and I almost feel like, like, I want a giant bed that I can climb into and cuddle up, you know, with my little, you know, family, mouse family. So I, I almost want to jump into this picture and, you know, they look so comfy in their beds and stuff and I don't know, I just love it. And of course I use my Erogetons on everything and then my Posca pens to make little dots on stuff and, um... Yeah, I was just really happy with the way this one turned out. I love her books anyway, and I love coloring in her books. So, and the little dog down here, um, right after my husband and I got married, um, we adopted a dog, a puppy, and her name was Roxy. And these were her colors. She looked like this. She was like a reddish brown color, and the snout was just a little bit lighter. So we lost her back in 2016. She was, but she lived to be 13 years old. But um, yeah, I was kind of thinking about her when I chose the colors and I didn't even realize it until after, you know, I was kind of like putting it in. I was like, oh my gosh, I colored her like Roxy. So she must have been, you know, on my mind in my subconscious. And I also love the fact that the cheese is so important that it's in like this glass, this beautiful glass jar with a ribbon and everything. I don't know. There's just something so cute about this picture and I love it and I love Clara's style and you know I always love pictures too when when you kind of flip to the picture and even though I like simple pictures there are times like with this one when I like seeing the entire page just full of color like the whole page is complete and what completed it in the background were the the chalks 
that's what completed the background. I'm not about to break my wrist trying to color an, an entire background with colored pencils because I, even though it's technically single sided, I for some reason I don't want to mess this side up. I don't know why, so I don't use markers. So yeah, I only use pencils and you know a little bit of the Posca pens and then the chalks in her books. So yeah, that's my little mouse family. Um, the next one is in Fairy Tales um, by Emily Lighthall Oberg. And I don't know why this is another one of those pictures. I don't know why, but it just makes me happy to look at it. And it's so cute. It's the little, um, these little otters in a, a cup. <laughs> and I don't know what it was. But when I saw this picture, I was like, I want it to be a blue and a pink. You know, I want it to be the blue. The boy ordered to be blue, the girl ordered to be pink, and I just wanted to make the the mug have just a lot of bright colors to it. And then using the chalks in the background and with the little bubbles around here, you can't really tell because for some reason it's just hard to tell. But um, those are glittery. I put some glitter in those just to make like little glittery bubbles. And you know, I just thought it turned out really cute and colorful it's really bright and colorful so yeah i like this one a lot this was back in april april of this year so yeah i really like this one makes me happy to look at it <laughs> okay so this is my favorite coloring book of all time it's the original romantic country by erie and I could go on and on about this, but I'm just going to get straight to it because this could possibly take forever. So this is one of my favorites in her book. Once again, it's a full page of color, a completed page, and I, I really had a lot of fun with this one. I loved adding little embellishments with my um, little uh, either like my gel pens or my Posca pens, like to add dots to the curtains and things like that, or on, up here on the coffee, um, the the teapot and then the the uh, teacup and stuff like that, and just you know doing. I can't tell the date on here. It looks like it says 2019. I think that's a nine, so 2019. And I, you know. I was just sometimes I am in the mood to do a little bit more like I said it doesn't always have to be simple so when I finished this I just wanted to add a little bit more a few more embellishments and I just really liked the way it turned out and you know I felt like I made it my own I'm, and um, that made me happy and I did not mark these off and now I'm regretting that a lot <laughs> oh, and here's another one this was back in 2017 and I like how this one turned out as well um, because I also used my um, my Posca paint markers to, you know, just once again, embellishments, add the dots on the tablecloth, all the dots you see here, pretty much any dot you see, I added those myself. Um, these little geometric shape things, the white ones on the pillows, I added little red sprinkles to the cake, a, a white to make it look like there was some drizzle on this, just things like, and some white parts and some pink parts on the roses. And I don't know, once again, it, it may be the nostalgia factor. It may be just, I don't know, remember experimenting for the first time with these types of things. And I just, and I just love Eerie's style so much. And I'm, you know, I'm really happy with with how it turned out. Especially for me being um, a beginner. This was February of 2017 and I, the first time I really colored was around Christmas of 2016 is when I was, you know, uh, trying to find books that suited me in a style that I wasn't intimidated by. The next picture here, of course, we have, it's like, I guess it's like a little farmer's market, but it's for all the breads and stuff like that. And I, I love it. I love the way all the little breads, um, turned out the, just everything, all of it. And I like how she snuck in her signature little goose in there. 
um, with the with the breads that are shaped like him and um, once again just adding my little embellishments with the with the Posca pins on the baskets and on the little um, handkerchiefs or uh, whatever you want to call them and I really like that one then of course on the next page <laughs> the bread I had so much fun coloring this bread it was just crazy and I was so proud of it when I was finished I remember showing my husband and you know he's he's really nice and like oh yeah that looks really good but I was like but look look at the bread look how cute can't you see and I you know I was still learning um, about shading and blending and stuff like that and so I was so proud with how this turned out with making certain parts look toasted and the blending and stuff like that and I took my um, my white pen and added like the little white dots on here to make it like there was salt on the pretzel and at the time I just thought it was so clever <laughs> so I remember being so excited about this and just having so much fun coloring this and also adding the the dots and the name Pauline here they're like little white dots just to kind of make it stand out and you know just having lots of fun. These are a lot of good memories of when I first started, first started coloring. And, you know, when you first start a new hobby, it uh, it's really exciting. And of course, I got my desserts. And I love these. I love the way all of these turned out. Um, most, most, if not all of these are French desserts, so I actually had to look them up to see what they looked like so I could, you know, try to color them correctly, and yeah, I, I tried to get as close as I could. Um, a roll cake, I knew what that was. I, of course, I know what a, a macaron is, um, a tart, you know, but some of the other ones I wasn't so sure, so I looked them up and just, you know, kind of colored them with the picture, but once again, this was another one where I was really excited about um, the blending and, you know, the shading and stuff like that to make the desserts look a little more textured and realistic and putting the little dots, making it like there's maybe some powdered sugar on here or something like that. So it, it's just, it makes me smile to see all this. It, it was a lot of fun. So, and then the next one is in the second tale, Romantic Country. And, um, out of all three of the Romantic Country books, I would say this one's my least favorite. Not that I don't like it, it's just my least favorite. But it has one of my favorite pictures in it. And that's this pretty picture here. I love the way this turned out, this pretty garden, vegetable garden. And I, I don't know, I just, I like coloring food and stuff. I don't know what the deal is. But, I don't know, I just have fun doing it. It's a vegetable garden. Um, coloring uh, the tree, like a Japanese maple tree, because I love Japanese maple trees. And once again, just the whole page is filled. And I don't know, I just love this, the cat here. I love the way this turned out. And um, this was back in March of 2017. So, yeah. Most of the, a lot of this is nostalgic, I think. A lot, this has a lot to do with nostalgia um, as well as just being happy with the way it turned out. But just when I see these pictures again, it just, it reminds me of the house we lived in before we moved to this one. And just, you know, um, our other two dogs that we lost, um, they were still with us. And, you know, just a, you know, a really happy time. So, yeah. I like that one. Now, out of all the romantic country books, this is the third tale, and this one has my absolute favorite picture. I've colored in all of, out of the romantic country books. And that is this one here. I am in love with this picture. I'm so happy with the way this picture turned out. All the color, I loved Zoom in a little bit. I love the way all the fruits turned out um, with the different colors. It's just so bright. 
Um, the umbrella just had like these little diamonds here, so I added all the um, dots and color so it wouldn't be so bland, so it would stand out. And just the, you know, I don't know, something about just the colors all came together for me, for what I like. And um, I used like some paint. I remember I just took some white paint and instead of, it's acrylic paint, you know, instead of paint, I just kind of put it on my finger and rubbed it like this, just to give it like a, you know, because you don't want a really clean look because this is, you know, it's water, you know, so it's not gonna be pristine and straight, you know, so I just kind of smudged it in there just to give it that look of, you know, maybe there's a little bit of wave in the water everything and I, I don't know I'm just really happy with the way this came out I like the colors um, the way they came out with complementing each other and it was just so fun coloring these fruits and I don't know why like adding little lines to make the the shine on the apples you know and on the oranges and things like that and it just I don't know it was a lot of fun and I'm really 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 happy with the way this picture turned out and anytime I flip through this, I always stop and just kind of look at this picture because it always catches my eye because it's, there's just so much color going on. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Like I said, I'm not bragging. I'm not saying, look what I did, it's so beautiful. You know, it's just like, I'm just, I'm happy with what I accomplished. You know, I, I see how far I've come from 2017 now to this was in April of this year to this point I see how far I've come and it just you know when you see progress like that with a hobby or with anything that you do and you can see your progression of you improving over time it's just it's a really good feeling so yeah so that is it and um so I hope you enjoyed seeing that. I enjoyed showing them to you. I really enjoyed being able, you know, I, I'm looking at pictures that I probably haven't seen in a while. So it, it, it brought back a lot of good memories for me and how much fun I had coloring them and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe now you get this feel of knowing me as a colorist a little more so um you get more of a feeling of how i color how i like to color what i use to color and stuff like that so we're still getting to know each other since i'm pretty new on here so i can understand you know maybe wanting to see um you know what my uh, style is because i would probably be the same way i like seeing other people's styles and the way they choose to color so I hope you like this video and I want to thank you for watching and um, please feel free to comment, um, leave a thumbs up if you like this video and also if you like this video and other videos if you want to go back and watch those please consider subscribing to this channel and um, yeah thank you so much for watching and I will be making that color and chat very soon so stay tuned for that and I will see you very soon. Bye.